and still just extra special to be spending time with these two it's not like we've seen that much of them recently and it's so always nice to be in the company of the two of them and the fact that they're together just makes it that much better it's been a long 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 time since these two have spent time with us in each other's company so certainly enjoying the fact that we can sit with them and little Shongila seems to be a little bit more restless than what Hassan is she tends to move around quite a bit and lift her head at the gusts of wind and check around whereas Hassana seems to be completely happy just to be lying where he is now last night we had the most insane thing happen to us on the way home and I forgot to tell everybody about this first thing but I was leaving the Aina Den yesterday at the end of drive and you might notice that just here on my dashboard there's a funny thing now normally Taylor and I are both quite OCD about cleaning our cars but I left this on the car and didn't clean it because I wanted to show all of you now what you might notice there is the perfect shape of wings and body and a tail that comes at the back so last night on my way home I was slowly puttering home there's the wings there and then the head in the front and then the tail towards the back there so I was slowly puttering home and a night jar decided that well in this cold breezy wind that the engine bonnet must have been warm and landed perfectly on the bonnet. It then sat there as though it was going to just stay on my car and I thought I'll be able to stop and we'll be able to show all of you with the night jar resting on my bonnet but unfortunately as I stopped the shutter of the engine the night jar then took off and that's the nice little dust angel that it left so I had a night jar playing dust angels on my car last night and it was probably one of the most bizarre things that I've ever seen happen to me. It was just so weird because we were driving along and down came this night jar and just perfectly landed on the bonnet, sat there for a bit and then off it went again. It was very weird but very cool so I'll clean that off a little bit later but it's not every day you're going to have a print of a night jar on your bonnet and certainly would confuse a number of our presenters if I left it. Sammy Jane you say I hit a bird no I didn't hit a bird like I say we were driving and the bird landed on the bonnet and sat on the bonnet and was relaxing on the bonnet as though it was a perch of a tree it was in no way did I hit it or hurt it in any way it then flew off once I turned the engine and it moved off it literally just landed as though it was a branch it was a perfect landing it was nice and soft and then it sat down and it was just looking at me as though I had, you know, is, what am I looking at? This is the perfect place to be. And I would imagine it must have been nice and warm and in that cold wind, it must have been perfect. Donna, you say a hitchhiker. Well, most definitely a hitchhiker. So hitchhiked on my bonnet and certainly <laughs> made its presence known. Now, I'm just going to try and see if I can't reposition so that we can see Hosanna because where we are now, we haven't really got a nice view of our little prince. So I'm going to try and reposition myself a little bit so let's see if we go back here um, let's try and see I'm gonna try and just reverse back here it's a long way around that we're going to go because of the nature of where we are. But this should be perfect to turn. So it is a very dense, very thick area and it makes life a little bit tough. So hopefully if they do get moving, they decide to move in a more friendly section because if they go north from here, we're going to have a bit of a problem. But for now, I don't think they're going to go too far. I'd imagine their first port of call after today, or well, after the afternoon is going to be to drink and then move around so let's just try and quickly just get around this side so I'm hoping from here we'll get a little view down the drainage through there, Seb is that okay? there we go there's our little boy he's just sitting under the tree and in the ditch and out of the wind Go. Now he looks like you can see there a lot larger than what Shongile is at the moment so he's certainly looking a lot bigger. Now hopefully at some point he'll put up his head and we can confirm it's him but I'm pretty sure a lot of us have all kinds of spots that we use and there must be a spot on his shoulder that we can use to identify and make a hundred percent sure that it is Hosanna. But very sleepy. 
Shongile definitely got the lion's share of that meal for sure. Oh, is he going to stretch and turn? Come turn. No, he didn't turn. He just went back to sleep again. But either way, like I say, Shongile got more of this meal than anybody else because his belly is not quite as large. It's still full, but not nearly as large as what Shongile's is. So I'd imagine my mind, it must have been something like a daker or something like that. That's what I would imagine they fed on. That is one very sleepy cat. Exquisite Bliss, you're wondering if they'll always have bonds as siblings. Well, Exquisite Bliss, no, not really. So you'll find that as soon as they become older and, and they become sexually mature, then you'll find that Hosanna will try and mate with Shongile. Even though it's his sister, he will... It, the, the instinct to mate far outweighs that bond that they had and remember that they'll probably be apart for quite some time before he would be able to mate with her anyway so it can happen that he ends up mating with his sister it's, it's not something that is unheard of but certainly they won't have this bond like they do now where they're very tolerant of one another you'll find that she'll become a lot more irritable with his presence other than when she's in heat if she's in heat obviously she'll be quite happy that he's around if she's not in heat then she's going to be pretty sort of irritable with the male being around she'll probably try and depart the scene as quick as possible unless obviously there's a carcass and she sits around and waits for food to come but other than that she's going to probably be fairly fairly intolerant of him as she gets older and the same with him he's not going to really want this female following him around as he becomes a territorial male and the chances of him staying anywhere near where Shongilia is, is, like I said earlier, very slim, given the number of males that we have in this particular area. It seems as though we almost have more males than females at the moment, which is not as ideal as well would, we would like. Now, I'm just trying to see Seb. I think we might have a better gap if I... Mm, no, there's a big stump there. I thought we would have a gap to be able to move slightly where we could have actually seen both of them. But there's a massive stump and a ditch, so we're not going to be able to go that way, I don't think. And so let's go quickly across to Taylor with her feathered friend while I th ponder my next move. <laughs> 